Hey, I'm Spencer. And I'm Britton. Since 2011, Buckethead has released 301 albums in his Pike series. And we're going to listen to them. Three at a time. This is Getting Head. No. Welcome, patriots, patriarchs, smarks, larks, and great white sharks, friends of the pod, foes of God, the inventor of the term dad bod, <laughs> heroes, villains, guys who make hero sandwiches, mm -hmm. and guys who make villain sandwiches, bland bitches, grand riches, and hand pitches, stand mixers, cat fixers, big tricksters, and the tricks rabbit. If you're wow. listening to this, you've got a bad habit. If you don't want to get hooked, turn it off fast. It's episode 76 of Getting Head, the bucket cast. Wow, that was quite an intro, Britt. Thanks for that. That's that's uh, my thing now. Is, yeah, uh, to is, doing the big intro. Yeah, it's a deaf jam poetry intro. Is I, my thing I, li now. I like the poetic intros. I feel like they're nice. I feel like they set us up for success. They set us up for a good podcasting experience mm -hmm. i think it's really nice I what do you, really you, you have for 76 buddy uh the, that's the name of some sports teams i think i the don't philadelphia 76ers just one sports team really but yeah yeah are they a baseball no team? definitely okay. not sorry basketball <laughs> then right uh yes the 76ers okay yeah, yeah. all right mm -hmm. all right it is I a b-ball sport it is a b-ball so <laughs> in in the ralph verse who knows who, who knows? knows you could have so, been right you know speaking of b-ball i actually asked some friends of mine who watch sports i was like so b-ball right it's always basketball and they were like that's basketball it's and always I, and basketball. i was like a hundred percent of like, the time but are you and they were like no 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 that's fucking basketball shut up and i was yeah. like all right okay could, okay it could be bowling it's a b ball bowling that is, ball that is true oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no come on uh, bowling ball it yes, is correct. always basketball especially since all of the guys you work with have at least one pair of yeezys it's definitely basketball for them uh yeah a lot of them do mm. those are really popular except for the goth manager uh, oh, i call yeah. him the goth manager he's he he is kind of goth i gotta say mm. he's not very cool he's kind of is he's he, fine he's goth to boss uh, what oh oh shit i gotta show you that it's a it's a reference from the it crowd ah uh noel fielding who's mm -hmm. on um, yeah, the yeah. mighty boosh like he, and uh, the great british baking show yeah, come on he, he's a goth who works for them who mm -hmm. ends up being their manager and so they have a thing like goth to boss. Okay. Yeah, that, that's it's, it's pretty nice. Good. That's yeah, pretty nice. That's very funny. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a guy that he's a goth manager and he, mm -hmm. he wears all black always. Oh, yeah. Uh so that's kind of goth. And very he goth. also always wears Rick Owens or Converse. That's um, pretty goth. That is pretty goth. So mm -hmm. he, he's always wearing either of those two uh, things. Interesting. Um, I don't know much about if he likes goth music or anything. I've never talked to him about You don't that, need to but... like the music to be goth. They just say that mm -hmm. online. They just say I that online. I find this highly problematic, what you're saying uh, right now. It's a, it's a music-based subculture. Watch me wear all black and get called goth dummy. Um, I ain't listening to your shitty post-punk from 1979. Get out of here. Speaking of that, you want to slot in a goth news? You just want to do that? Let's let's because we're talking about goths. Before that, uh, we're gonna start doing a thing uh, at, okay. the, at the top of the show. Now we're gonna talk mm -hmm. about uh, what's new on our Patreon. Okay, and uh, give a shout out to our uh, Patreon listeners. Let's do that. So uh, this week on Patreon, um, of course, we've always got uh, early access. Whenever I get done uh, editing the episodes, I throw them on up. Um, but uh, we've got uh, our bonus episode on 9-11 Media. <laughs> just came out this week. That was a very fun episode it was, to, that to, was very to record. Fun. That was really nice. Um, we also have um, uh, probably coming up this week, if we don't do it, I have one I did solo, but we're going to have a Bratz watch along. Mm -hmm. And then uh, later in the week, uh, we're going to do our special episode on Bratz that we uh, just recorded. Hell yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, big shout out to our $5 tier Patreons, Ian Killia, Dylan Lance, and Dan Morrison. Thank you so much for helping us make this show. Uh, once again, for as little as $2 a month, that's less than 50 cents a week. You can get an extra bonus episode or whole video library. You can 
talk I, to us. We're going to start doing commentary tracks. Well, I think, so yeah, we're going we're gonna, we're to start doing that. Yeah, we're going to watch movies together mm-hmm. and uh, we already, talk over we them. We already do that. We like, do all the time. Pretty regularly. Yeah, uh, so all the time. So We might as well just record it because... Why not? Who cares? Why not? Fuck it. Yeah. Life yeah. is meaningless. Might as well record it. That's true. That's true. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, what's new on Patreon. Uh, speaking of your goth boss, yeah, uh, what's what's the news? Beneath the weeping moon, this goth news, goth news, goth news, goth news. And tons going on in the goth world this this week. Uh, yeah, in. Tragic goth crime news this week. A British man who beat a young woman to death because she looked like a goth Ugh. is being released after 15 years in, pri- in prison this week. The attack happened in a British park in 2007 when Ryan Herbert and a group of his friends got into an altercation with a young man named Robert Maltby, mm-hmm. who uh, they asked for a cigarette and he gave them one. But then they started picking on him and uh, beating him up. As they jumped him, his girlfriend, Sophie Lancaster, tried to intervene but was also beaten. She succumbed to her injuries two weeks later in the hospital. Holy shit. The police said in the report that the attack was linked to the couple, quote, wearing gothic clothes. And the incident was used as inspiration for a storyline in the soap opera Coronation Street, where a couple goth characters are attacked by drunken youths. At least one of the assailants is still in jail at this time. Holy shit, that's terrible. I know, right? I hate that. Yeah, me too. This is supposed to be a fun segment. In celebrity goth news, (laughs) Kim Kardashian recently took to TikTok with her daughter Northwest, both wearing black eye makeup and lipstick to sing a Machine Gun Kelly song about emo girls. In response to the goth sing-along, former husband (laughs) Kanye West took to Twitter saying, I told y'all before about this TikTok stuff. Now my eight-year-old on here singing she fell in love with an emo girl. Leftist don't want fathers to have no say in our children's lives. I don't want my kids at godless Sierra Canyon school. I got a voice and I'm not having this. And Perez Hilton, you still ain't answered my question and never put my name next to the word abuse. So don't speak on me or my children. I can afford to hurt you, (laughs) which is definitely not a thing that abusers would say. That's amazing. Um, That's an amazing thing to is, say. I know. I love that it's, quote, Perez Hilton. I yeah. can afford to hurt you. Right? Because fuck that guy. Man, yeah, that right? guy sucks. But also, like, don't threaten to hurt people. No, nah, that's dumb. Not very goth of you, Kanye. Not goth at all. <laughs> and finally, in goth news. Oh, wait, one, one more thing about Kanye. Yeah. His uh, Instagram sus- account was suspended for one day. I think it was uh, in response to that. Yeah, for yeah. bullying and harassment. Right, yeah. right. Um mm-hmm. And finally in goth news, this week, famed gothic pizza chain Papa John's faced backlash when Christopher Wine, an American-based franchise owner who operates 190 stores in Russia, refused to close his franchises in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. When asked why he would not close his franchises, Wine said, the vast majority of Russian people are very clear-headed and understand the dark gravity of the situation they're in. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, they appreciate a good pizza. <laughs> I'm still not sure what pizza he's talking about in the latter statement there. <laughs> Disgraced former CEO of Papa John's, John Schnatter, could not be reached for comment since he's on a skiing trip with his sons at the moment. Mm-hmm. Schnatter stepped down as CEO of Papa John's in 2018 after he blamed declining sales on football players protesting the treatment of black people in America, causing their stock to fall 30%. Uh-huh. He then used the N-word during a conference call. Oh my God, that's so good. Um, okay, going back to talking about managers, mm-hmm. uh, Here's what's up with managers. Me. Managers living on the road. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of managers, uh, there's a new manager at my work, and uh, this is what's up with me this week. This is like how <laughs> empty my life is. Uh-huh. <laughs> but like, so there's this new manager at work. He seems like a fine guy. I don't know. I've barely interacted with him. Mm-hmm. But 
there is something interesting about him that I think is funny. Um, so he wears bling, like okay. really, like like the classic, like early two thousands, like like spinner chains and shit. Yeah, like oh, big yeah. thick chains mm-hmm, with like it. the studded with the fake diamonds and stuff, and then like the giant medallions that are like all heavy and like studded with the the fake diamonds and stuff. So the day I met him. He was wearing like a big, thick gold chain, like mm-hmm. very, very thick. I'm talking like inch and a half thick links, huge. Wow. huge gold chain, right? When I met him, and I'm like, okay, whatever. I didn't really think much of that. I was like, that's a little funny, but like, whatever. Mm-hmm. The next day, and this is the first day I'd worked with him on the floor. Yeah, he came to work wearing, I shit you not, it was like a a silver like like uh, crystal encrusted chain. And the medallion was like a large Spider-Man head okay. encrusted with crystals. Right. And I was like, what the fuck? I don't find this like difficult to believe at all. Like, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's the type of person who'd work for the Geek Squad. That makes sense. I have never, I, bro, I have not seen anyone wear bling since fucking 2007. Like, I have not seen anybody wear, like, big gold chains, like, maybe ever IRL. Wow. Like, I don't know. It was, It's a very surprising look. It's very unusual. Hmm. Um, the Spider-Man head, especially, like, I'm, I'm okay, here's what did, I'm hoping. Did he transfer? I feel like he transferred from, like, Atlanta. L.A. That also makes sense, but Atlanta would make more sense. Yeah. <laughs> so, he, uh, <laughs> so, well, here's what I want to come from this. I, like, I want him to have more superhero bling. Mm-hmm. So, I want him to have, like, a Hulk or something. Okay. <laughs> or, like, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, like the rest of Spider-Man's body, not just his head. But like, what, what what superhero would you be most disappointed in? If Ant-Man. You had of it? Ant-Man, really? I, I I think I'd be disappointed if it was like Deadpool. I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh man, Deadpool would be so cringe. My God. Yeah, it'd be bro, the most cringe. If he came to work wearing like a Deadpool like medallion, like I would not stop laughing. Like I would not be able to look him in you the shouldn't. eye. Like I would just like be like, bro. You should you should just make you should just like start laughing when you're talking to him. Like what? I'm like, I'm like nothing. <laughs> just keep staring at his chain while you're talking to him, bro. So <laughs> like ah. Uh, my okay. eyes are up here, Spencer. The ne- the next day, yeah. he was wearing like a big silver chain, and on like hanging as a medallion on the big silver chain were fake dog tags with his own name on them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he served in the uh, the Great Geek Squad War of nineteen thirty eight. Like, like they're, they're not mi- military dog tags. They're like they're like silver plated, and like the the text goes the wrong way. So it's like. You know how like a dog tag is like an oval shape, right? And like typically <laughs> the the text will be on the long side of the oval. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, they're just in the text is just in the middle of it, like like in the skinny part of the oval, like, and it just has his name on it. Mm-hmm. And but they're not real dog tags. I don't know. I'm so confused. Like I don't <laughs> understand what what is happening he's, here. He's like <laughs> he's lying down at like the fucking uh, uh, the the phone service counter. He's like. Tell my family, and he tells you the dog tags. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna go deal with this customer. Is that is give that, these to my wife? <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel like that's like stolen valor in a way. Yeah, I was like, that was my very first response. That's, so like my my so my my homie and I at work have been like texting about this every time we see him with like new chains and mm-hmm. stuff. And like he uh, he like texted me and he was like, bro, he's wearing like dog tags with his own name on him today. And I was like, what the fuck is that stolen valor? <laughs> like, what is <laughs> happening here? Like, because it's, it's like, it's very clear that they're not military at all. And like, I don't think this guy's been in the military. I think he just plays a lot of Call of Duty. Like, I, I don't, Yeah. I don't know. But, yes, that's, like, that, yeah. yeah, I served in the 602 homes. <laughs> <laughs> You're assuming a lot here with the accent. Is he white? No. I didn't think so. Uh, is he black? No. So he's brown. He's Brown, yeah, but so I'm not indeterminately I, I, brown. Indeterminately brown, yeah. So obviously half Mexican, one quarter Vietnamese, and a third Filipino. I would, I would, I would guess maybe I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's hard for me to speculate. Uh, he looks very like 
I just gave you I think 113 percent of a person. By the way. <laughs> I think so. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't think that math was great. <laughs> no, it was bad. Um, it was intentionally, I wanted to see if you caught it. <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. I just like things like that. I'm like, I don't need to address it because it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I want you to. I want you to call me about out on being stupid. I'm uh, I'm okay if, with you, if you being don't, stupid. If you don't like, call me fine. out on being stupid, I just assume you're stupid, and that's why you didn't call me well, out. Well, so you're correct in that <laughs> assumption, and I'm just. I'm okay with it. Oh, that's fine. And that's, that's, fair. that's fine. So that's what's been going on with me, Britt. What's been going on with you? Uh, you know what? Uh, stuff. Uh, my parents just came to visit for a little while. Um, Both of them? Yeah. Well, my dad came for like a week, and mm-hmm. then my mom came for a few days after him. Damn. I don't know. They're still that's going through coming. some weird shit. And I don't know. That's stupid. I just, it was stressful. Uh, 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 I, I just yeah. been stressed with my parents around. Lately. Yeah. That's... Being stressed with your parents around is a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Like it's, it, it can be really hard. It is. I've been like calling my cat weird names. Cause like, you know how like when you have a cat and you like give it nicknames, but then you call it like nicknames that are like extrapolations of the nicknames. Kind of. And so it like. It can really like yeah. go pretty far yeah, away like, from yeah, the name call, of the cat. I call Z, and then you know, <laughs> went to like Lady Z, or then Zebra, Lady Zebra, um, yeah, like Ladybug, Z B, yeah, Z Z, meow meow, meow 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 meow, yeah yeah, meow 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 meow. So like, uh, I've been calling my cat. Uh, I, I call him Meow a lot, meow and meow. so then I started calling Mister Meow, uh-huh, yeah. and then I started calling him Mister Boy, okay. and then Mister Man, Mister Lad. Okay. Uh, Mr. Meow Meow. Yeah. Um, and just coming up with different names. Mr. Boy is my favorite name for him, though. Like, Mr. Boy is fun. Yeah. It, it's fun, you know. It's like you would never encounter that name out in the world. Uh, in the yeah, world, I, I like when um, like like things have names that sound definitely like the person who gave it that name has like English is like a fourth language. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, like like a fucking like a, a band called like Music Band or mm, something. Yes, uh, Music Band. We are uh, Music Band. We are a Music Band. We are from indeterminate space with a very strange accents, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we mm-hmm. play we play the uh, the to the tune. The synthesizer. Well, this is, uh, I, I play the the one with the string. You know the string instrument? I play the string. Ivan plays synthesizer. <laughs> Boris also plays synthesizer. <laughs> Boris parents died very young. <laughs> Very sad. Very sad. Good synth player. Love <laughs> Boris. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's music band for you. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So that's that's life, though. You know, sometimes music you, band is life, baby. Music band is life. Also, sometimes, Mr. Boy is life. Oh yeah, Mr. Boris, the synthesizer player. Yeah. Life for sure. Hell yeah. You want to hit us with a bucket fact? What's it? You want a bucket fact? Today, we're going to talk about a project, Bucketheads, I don't think we've even mentioned on the cast before. Mm-hmm. We're going for Thanatopsis. 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 That's quite a name. Named, Sounds like a Marvel villain. Named villain-y. after a poem by William Cullen Bryant. Mm-hmm. Thanatopsis was formed in 2001 and has always kept the same core lineup of Buckethead on guitars, Rami Onton on drums, and Travis Dickerson on keys in production. Travis Dickerson, very famous collaborator, He's produced like all of uh, Buckethead stuff with uh, Viggo Mortensen, mm-hmm. the Cobra Strike Records. Mm-hmm. Like, if if it was if it's done by Buckethead after like 1999, and it's not a Pike, you could assume it was probably recorded at some point by Travis Dickerson in his studio at TDRS. Yeah. Um. Anyway, according to Travis Dickerson, quote: I started working with Buckethead sometime in the late 90s. We had worked on Vigo's record, One Less Thing to Worry About, and I did Cobra Strike, Cobra Strike 2, Somewhere Over the Slaughterhouse, and some others. Mm -hmm. For Cobra Strike 2 and Somewhere Over the Slaughterhouse, I had fashioned some tracks for Buckethead to play over and told him if he liked them, he was welcome to use them. Spider Crawl, Pins, Bones, and Poultry, and a few others were the result. Sometime in 2000, I started putting together a bunch of these types of tracks. I asked Raimi who had been doing sessions here, if he was interested in playing on them. And before I knew it, I had Thanatopsis, the first CD. Mm -hmm. I'd had the idea of doing a project called Thanatopsis before starting this project. 
I always like the William Cullen Bryant poem. And in fact, I named one of the tracks we did on the Death Cube K tunnel CD, Thanatopsis. Thanatopsis was meant to be dark and evoke the feeling from the poem. And I had Fred from my Macintosh read the poem is the intro to the last track. Mm-hmm. So I'll be honest. Um, I've seen the name mentioned in a few places, but for some reason you don't see this project being brought up in a whole lot of buckethead circles. Hmm. You don't see it on the forums very often. It's like, it's actually, uh, it's probably their, his least talked about project. Like he doesn't have any links for it on Wikipedia or anything. It's like, it's, hmm. it's kind of a rare buckethead set of albums and there's four of them. Four? They made four of them between 2001 wow. and I think 2009. Hmm. Um, but uh, I think the reason, like, it's not mentioned too much by a lot of, uh, you know, buckethead savants, if you will, we just disappeared. I know. Okay. Okay. Um, Uh, is that the music is more keyboard structure or sorry, keyboard centric and structure and not guitar centric and mm-hmm. Buckethead's playing, although awesome on it is not the centerpiece of the music. He kind of does more solo sections and like doubles a lot of stuff Travis is doing. Um, the only way you can describe the music is like jazz funk metal fusion, but very, very different from Buckethead's approach of jazz funk and fusion before with like yeah. an absolute emphasis on the keyboards, which really like colors it very differently. Um, in as much, I would actually probably recommend it the most out of any Buckethead project outside of Praxis. It's really, really fucking good. That, that fucking rocks. And I am really uh, curious to check it out. Thanatopsis. Pretty darn cool. Bucket facts. We listened to three more Pikes this week. We did. We're going to have to take a quick pause here. Yeah. I'm having trouble with your camera. Yeah, yeah, let's... Oh, but you're back? There go. Cool. There we go. Yeah, it fixed yeah. the problem. Just Lovely. Re- just talking you about... Love it, you love it when a power cycle fi- like fixes the problem. You love it when you just unplug something and plug it back in, and then it works again. Yeah. Look at that. And here we are. We're, we're, we're talking about Buckethead albums. Indeed we are. Um, this week, we have Pikes 226, 227, and 228. Happy birthday, MJ23. Arcade of the Deserted and the Creaking Stairs, respectively. Mm-hmm. Um, Heck yeah. Pike 226. Happy birthday, MJ23. Now, this is one of the few pikes I have definitely seen mentioned quite often before I got to it, which is pretty rare for a pike. Yeah. Yeah, this one's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this is definitely like, yeah, it's one like, of the few celebrated ladder pikes, I'd say. Um, you know, you know what's an interesting thing is mm. that like these ladder pikes, like they have way more views than some of the early pikes. Like hmm. way more. Like this one had like eighty thousand views or something. Like that's for, some of the earlier ones. Like the first few of them have like over a hundred thousand views. All of them. I guess like what I'm going for yeah. is like the number of comments is way higher. There like, were a ton of comments. I like saw on this. this one, there were like two hundred comments. Like it was crazy. And you know, I, I wonder if a lot of that is like people who were very active before getting back into the buckethead pikes after the uh, mm. you know thirty days of Halloween because this yeah. is a good you know. Probably at this point, I mean, it's in February, so almost six months after the, the Halloween pikes. And, true, true. You know, probably a good time to start getting back into stuff. But um, Definitely. Uh, I mean, pike, well, yeah, these pikes are, are pretty cool. So, like, uh, the like yeah, this one's really cool. The album art is really cool. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should mention that. Like, yeah. it looks really rad. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, quite a it was uh, released on February 17th, 2016, mm-hmm. 21 days after Floor Mat. Wow, that's which a, is that's a pretty big gap. The for, longest break yeah. he's taken uh, for a year in doing pikes over a year. Wow. Yeah, he he never took a twenty one day break in twenty fifteen between pikes. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. That's so, pretty wild. Uh, starting out with the first and longest track. Yeah. Uh, it's about fifteen minutes long. Uh, this is the best song on this titular album. track. Yeah. yeah. Happy birthday, MJ twenty three. Uh, it's basically just like an incredibly long solo and lead section. Yeah. But it's very good. Yeah. And I get why this is like such a celebrated pike is like 
Buckethead like pulls out some of his craziest shredding mastery. He on shreds this album. so hard. On he this shreds one. so hard and so fucking fast and so accurately. Yeah, it's crazy cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. He um, plays some really cool stuff on on this song, mm-hmm. in particular. Um, this one's got four songs on it, mm-hmm. and they're each a little bit different. Yeah. Um, this one, like the first one and longest one, is is the most. Oh, it's like a big shred thing. The, the, you know? the second and fourth track are very similar. They are. They're like funk metal. Yeah, yeah. Chunky funk metal is, is what I wrote for both of them. Chunk metal. Yeah. Well, chunk. That metal. reminds me of my favorite joke. Can I tell you my favorite? joke from a tv show i suppose uh, okay my favorite joke from a recent tv show uh Let's young sheldon see. uh yeah how'd you know no. uh no it's actually from uh the unbreakable kimmy schmidt mm. um which is a show that kind of became less funny and i stopped watching it but at some point in the first or second season there's a joke that i think is amazing and that's where uh the the characters are at a um the, at like a dollar store type of place hmm. where like every, they, they sell odd products and one of the characters is looking at a box of cereal and he just like exclaims out of nowhere he's like the only listed ingredient is chunks <laughs> that is pretty fun it's really it's a great uh, joke <laughs> chunk, chunks are chunks are fun um but yeah uh first track is great honestly all the tracks on this album are good this is just a pretty Mm -hmm. solid pike uh it's a pretty solid pike solid 30 minutes of music um even though the first song is long it's the best song on the album doesn't overstay its welcome second song has a bit of a weird mix uh but it's like funk metal and it's it's all right makes sense though it's like very bass and guitar forward at once yeah there's only one guitar track yeah and it's like not centered or it's like weird it's like just panned a little bit to the left. Mm. It's kind of odd. Yeah, it uh, works though. Um, it, does. it does. After that, we got a track called Yellow Brick Snail, which is actually a really nice slowdown to the album. Yeah, it's it's more of like a mellow kind of thing with like kind a pretty guitar post, solo. Post rocky kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with a soaring solo. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty authentic sounding drums too, which I really liked here. Mm-hmm. Um, like, he actually, Buckethead is very good at programming drums for slower music. Because the slower you get, the more you realize that, like, hey, there's no transients here. Hey, this doesn't real sound like real drums. Yeah. But he, like, he lays it on real thick when he's doing slow music with, like, stuff that takes up space. Yeah. Like, he does a whole lot of, like, rolling snares. And the one thing he always does is he has uh, four on the fucking riot cymbal. That ting, 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 ting. Yeah. It's just, like, rhythmic and, like, fills up so much space that would otherwise, like... You know, the empty space would make the drums sound very inauthentic and programmed. But That's a good point. That's, That's good. a good point, yeah. Um, After that, we have Ribcage Reef, which is just an awesome name for a song. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I can imagine a, a Christmas reef made out of rib cages. Yeah, that, that's that's more of a Krampus reef. Than yeah, anything, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. sick as hell, though, right? It is pretty sick. I'm, I'm a down, fan. I'd be down with um, that. Th- that song's like a, that's like a 90s groove thrash song, kind of. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's, like with, it's kind of funky. It sounds very similar to song, too. Definitely. Uh, the mix is a little bit better, uh, but yeah. it sounds similar. Very similar. Definitely. Uh, overall, this was a good pike. It's a pretty solid pike. Have you ever wished a, wished a happy birthday to a celebrity? Like Buckethead's doing here. Is there anyone who you could consider writing an album to say happy birthday to? I already did. I mean, it was a song, I guess, and an EP. But I wrote my brother uh, a couple of EPs That's for, true. for his birthday. The That's first true. one um, being uh, Princess Die. Die, die, die. Princess Die. Yeah, which is about just being happy that Princess Die is dead. Which, aren't we all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Spencer uh, wrote the uh, guitar riff on that song. It it's, did. It's pretty, pretty chunky. It's uh, pretty, pretty chunky, pretty fun. Uh, and then the other album I did was called Information Dad. Because <laughs> my brother would just like, whenever, um, you know, uh, we'd smoke weed, he'd be like, uh, I know someone you don't know, Information Dad. And so I wrote an <laughs> entire album based on that. Because <laughs> is just, that like reference to your dad being an IT guy? Kind of. It was. It was originally like a joke he made about an iPad. He's like, uh, "Well, like I dad, <laughs> information dad." Yeah. And then he just kind of kept on going with it. I don't know. It was as a, as you do. It was a stoned decision, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so for this album, uh, what b-ball player would you dedicate an album to? <laughs> uh, I. 
I really only know a couple b-ball players. I don't care um, which one. Well, let me name the ones that I know. Well, no, um, I'm not. I'm asking. Well, which one would you dedicate an album to? Choose one of the ones you know. Uh, there's only one right answer here, based on what I know you know. Oh, okay. Um, Charles Barkley. No, you are writing an album for Shaq Spencer. Okay. Why would you write an album for Charles Barkley? You don't even know what he does. Well, I don't know what he does, but... You know what I, Shaq does, though. You know Shaq hangs with the general. I don't... Oh, yeah, Shaq does hang with the he general. He does but, hang But Charles Barkley, Shut Up and Jam, Guy Den is one of my favorite freeware games from the early 2000s. Hey, careful with the screen. Uh, Pike 227, Arcade of the Deserted, released on February 20th, 2016. Three days after happy birthday, MJ23. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we got to talk about it. I what? fucking hated this album because I Ooh. hate the fucking mix on it. The fucking guitar where it's like panning left and right. And it's just a single guitar track panning left and right for like an entire goddamn song. I cannot fucking stand that shit. It drove me insane. And I fucking hated this album just because of that. That's weird. I was fine with it. But yeah, I can't stand that. I hate it when bands do that. Like, mm-hmm. it just bothers me. It just, I just think it sounds really bad. Like, and I don't care I who it is that does it. I love a panning filter. Like, it, well, yeah. it can be cool if it's like, if it's like, a lead that's like over something right like True, yeah but in this case it's just a riff and the riffs were cool and that's what was so like frustrating and disappointing about this one to me because like the riffs i thought were like thrashy and cool mm-hmm. but like instead of just like double tracking the guitars and panning them left and right like you should do like he just recorded one track and then had it like set up to automate panning back and forth through the whole song mm-hmm. and it just sounded distracting and terrible and i I just hate that. I hate that sound. Mm. I, I can't stand it. So, like, it really bothered me, and I, as a result, I, I struggled with this one. For a um, an album where guitar is, like, forward and everything, I'm totally fine with automation and playing around with effects for it. Like, you know, if this was, like, vocal music and they were doing that with vocals, it could be kind of cool, depending on what they did. Sure. And so it, I think it really depends on what the centerpiece. I didn't have a problem with it. I thought the, the whole mix in this album was Pretty good. It wasn't as good as uh, the first or third album we listened to this week, but it was a little over compressed, but it's fine. Yeah, I I can't I couldn't stand it. I, I, I'm literally giving this a one out of ten. It is one of the worst pikes and so in my that opinion was, because that was, of that. That was just what, the first song? No, no, it was not just the first song. It was actually every song that was heavy. Yeah, I was going to say, because Cavernous is a beautiful, nice song. So that one is a lot better. It still Ugh. does the panning thing in that song, but the mix is such that it doesn't, it's not as distracting because there's more going on in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, that song I didn't hate, but like the heavy song, so like the first song and the last song specifically hmm. did the panning thing and it drove me nuts. Wow. Yeah. Uh, really? One, one out of 10 yeah. just because you didn't like the panning. Hey, I mean, I I feel like that's legitimate like criticism. Like if 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 the if the audio engineer makes a decision that really bothers you, like that. But that a one is... out of ten. But but the the thing is, you're saying everything on this album is bad because the songwriting is a one out of ten. I didn't say that. that. I said the riffs are sick. So, but the riffs don't elevate it at all. So 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 the panning thing is so bad. If if the music was just acceptable, it would get a negative score from you. Is what you're saying. No, that's not what I'm saying. So, what so, I, no, so, no, no, no. so the on. songwriting doesn't elevate it at all. What I'm saying... Because you can't go lower than one. What I'm saying mm-hmm. is that despite the songwriting being solid, the mixing decisions like lower the quality of the experience so much that it becomes, to my ears, unlistenable. Now, like if the panning issue was not there, if it was just like, you know, it just center panned or whatever Mm -hmm. you know or there's double tracked or whatever like then it i would it would receive a proper score you know what i'm saying i'm actually saying no score is what i'm saying i guess that i'm saying i can't score it because of the issue with the mix interesting uh because it 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 because like you said i actually agree with what you said you can't give a negative score so yeah as a result and and giving something a score of one is saying that everything about it is a one I agree. Yeah. I, I was speaking to it from a from a like a, a very subjective perspective. Yes, um, yes, yes. But so as a result, I I cannot score this you, one. You and you definitely uh, tend to hyperbole a lot when you dislike something. This is true. I mean, so do you. You very much do. <laughs> I 
I, over the past few years, I've become a lot more even about like criticizing things fairly. You have become a lot more even, and I will give you that credit. Like, no, you, you used yeah. to be a lot more. I, I was. I used uh, to be a dickhead about things, and I used to, which is why I'm calling you out on being a dickhead about things. Well, so I used to as well, because you're like, oh, I because hate I, this because I took and, inspiration and, from you. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I well, make you a bad person. No, Spencer. no, 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 no. I didn't say that. Uh, no, I just mean like I was very inspired by by your takes on things. You know, because mm-hmm. I I liked your takes. On things mm-hmm. I, I don't necessarily think that they're bad um that being said like i i can't score it and i was really like frustrated listening to this one because of the mixing issue and um it's a it's a bummer hate to see it fair hate to see it uh i i thought it was pretty good um not it was it was the weakest pike of this week mm-hmm. uh but i thought it was still pretty good fair but enough yeah, um fair enough. what uh hmm, hmm. oh you got what it? what what mixing mistake is this that you made for a decade until you figured out you were fucking it up? Oh, that's a good, that's a good one that, you know, and that's this, that is the classic not knowing how to use a compressor. Like I didn't understand what a Compressors? compressor really did for a long God. time. So honestly, I've always been fine with compressors. I didn't really like using them a lot because it, mm-hmm. I, I liked using, you know, I just mix down into a good headroom and then compress everything instead of compressing individual things, side chaining stuff like that, which is mm-hmm. a fine way to do it if you want stuff to be like super dynamic. Um, yeah. However, uh, recently I started using dual compressors, like two stage compressors, mm-hmm. which are fucking phenomenal. And that's how I make our voices sound so loud versus the signal to noise ratio on this podcast is I actually triple compress our voices and triple gate them. Yeah. Yeah. After basically every process I have our voices go through, it is gated and then compressed in another stage. And, you, you uh, love some compression. I, I mean, I, I love some compression too. It's like, and like, I've also been fine with compressors as mm-hmm. well for a long time, but like I definitely wasn't using them as efficiently and as correctly mm-hmm. as I should have been. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and you, so like learning more about how they work and, you know. You know what I just fucked up for the longest time mm. is probably until maybe like four or five years ago, I just never really high passed vocals. Oh, yeah. And literally... Yeah. There is no need in any mix unless you're doing like a solo vocal performance Mm -hmm. for any frequencies under like three or 400 hertz for a voice. It's nuts. One of the smartest things I ever started doing was just high passing everything. Right. And And, like, and and that's the thing. It's like once you do it, it is immediately recognizable. Like you mm -hmm. sent uh, the original mix of the goth news song. You sent it to me and I immediately like hit back. I'm like, it's good. However, like this, this, and maybe high pass the vocals. And you're like, shit, I forgot to high pass the vocals. I'm like, there it is. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's such a simple thing that makes such a huge difference. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, totally. And like, you, yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, high pass everything. If you're mixing stuff, it's great. Yeah. It hi- will help uh, you. Yeah. Except for maybe like a kick and a sub bass, depending on what you're doing with them. Depending on the mix. Depending correct. on the mix. Uh, don't, don't high pass your like, uh, processed 808. So that's the only thing you definitely don't want to do. With. Yeah, you don't really. Well, I mean, you might want to cut off just a little bit of that, like sub twenty hertz nonsense. Mm, you don't really need that. Yeah, but. maybe. But at the same time, like you don't need it. But if you're gonna play on a huge system, and if your that mix will if, be, if your mix has the room for it too. Yeah, if your mix has the room for it, and if you're actually like a real DJ, like leave that in because like on huge systems, you'll feel that fucking twenty hertz. That's some good. Oh shit. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's some real shit, baby. That's some real shit. That's some uh, real shit. Speaking of real that. shit, Pike yeah. 228, The Creaking Stairs. That's This is some real shit. Released right on February 24th, 2016, four days after Arcade of the Deserted. This uh, it's like a three-part uh, spooky album. This is spooky. This is a real spooky one. It's mm-hmm. shreddy and spooky. Um... Starts out uh, part one, Creaking Stairs part one. Just a very spooky metal song. Yeah. Oh, man. The riffs on this one are sick. There's so they're many so There's cool. so many riffs. The last like, song, 
I lost count of how many riffs there are on. Yeah, like, there's got to be like twenty riffs on the last this, song. This it's is nuts. my this is my favorite album of this week. I, 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 think. I like, like the first one a lot just because of its diversity, but for the songwriting, this yeah, one definitely. like the, the 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 riffs on this are like almost black metal. Like they're like At very times. yeah. He's he's doing a lot of like chordal stuff and like really cool like dissonant harmonies and like mm-hmm. it's it's really neat. Like he's typically only playing with one guitar track, but mm-hmm. it's like center panned and like. He's doing a lot of like riffs that go into like lead parts, but like the riffs, mm-hmm. it, it's it's cool. It's it's a little unusual compared to the stuff that he's been doing lately. Right, but it also it's, reminds me of like a lot of the metal stuff he was doing in the like the one hundred pikes when he was doing like the real frantic stuff. Frantic TikTok. Frantic tick 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 tock. Yeah. Uh, did do you know that's what the Chinese app TikTok is based on? Oh yeah, that makes yes. sense. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, Fran Drescher and TikTok were what that song's about. I mean, that makes sense. Fran, the Fran Drescher connection makes sense yeah. because TikTok, much like Fran, Fran Drescher, is annoying and yes. not something I want in my life. Right. Um, so, yes. And uh, also, I mean, oddly enough, too, um, <laughs> TikTok is approved by the Chinese nanny state. Fran Drescher started mm-hmm. a nanny. Yeah, there you go. Which is like, you right? Go. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Um, Odd coincidence. Uh, certainly. Yeah. Creek and Stairs, though. Yeah. Kick-ass album. Creek and Stairs. Um, part three, especially. It, like, starts on a slowdown. Like, the whole album is, like, shreddy and metal up to this point. It starts on, like, a real slow part that's, like, kind of black metal or almost doom metal for mm-hmm. a second. And then it picks up, and he does, like, some string skipping stuff and weird funk metal. Yeah. And then he just, like, keeps on playing new riffs. Yeah, just new riff after new riff after yeah, new riff. and it's just, it's, like, tons of fucking riffs, and it rocks. It's pretty tight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's I super enjoyed riff this heavy. one, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, um, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, You ever you ever ha- been caught be- because of a creaking stair or, like, creaking floor or something? You ever been caught doing something you shouldn't have been doing? I can't think of anything. Okay. It's like, no... Yeah, not to mind you. Because like, well, I mean, you know, I'm when like when you're a kid and you're sneaking around mm-hmm. trying to do shit, like you always become very aware of where the creeks are. Right, right. And you're kind of like weaving in and out around them, and Hugo and all weaving. This. Yeah, Hugo weaving around them. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Um, much like he did in 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 the hit film The Matrix. Correct. Mm-hmm. As Agent Smith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that he was like, "Fuck all that shit." Like, yeah. fuck all that sci-fi fantasy shit. I don't give a fuck. And is like, I'm not doing that shit anymore. I like, I like yeah. that he did that. That's cool. Yeah. After he played the Red Skull in Captain America, the first Avenger. Mm. And Elrond in mm-hmm. the Lord of the Rings. Well, trilogy. no, I mean, I believe it was after Red Skull specifically. He was oh. like, I'm not doing any more sci-fi or fantasy shit. Really? That's yeah. weird. Why? I don't know. He was so popular in all of it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, like a, does he just not like, want to work and get paid a ton? I don't money? know. He's like hugely. Well, I mean, who knows what it's like to work on one of those movies? True, you know? and also like, he's probably like got so much money from the Matrix sequels, like, and not to mention Lord of the Fucking Rings. Yeah, true. Yeah. 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 Like those had to have made more money than the fucking Matrix sequels. Like nobody liked the Matrix sequels. Yeah, at the same time, I feel like the actor budget was probably a lot higher for the Matrix sequels than it was for mm. the Lord of the Rings because they produced the Lord of the Rings so quickly together. Mm. And, that makes sense. And also, there was so many more people in those films and so much more production in them. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. Right. That's a good point. He probably made more money, right? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's the pikes we did it we listened we, to pikes we, we did listen to all we the pikes. To pikes okay so brit spencer it's me hi spencer that's <clears throat> me hello spence it's brit again would you be willing to take a journey with me a journey i don't know mom always told me not to go with strangers yeah that's true <laughs> and, i mean although i know you you are strange so. that's true I don't speaking know. of strange yeah. would you accompany me to the bucket void the bucket void Oh my God. God. 
We're here. We're here. That was a great intro, Britt. Good job. Well, um. Anyways, we're here and we're back and we're here to talk about the stuff. And you, there's some. There's a lot to talk about this week. So let's uh-huh. get to it. You can say that again. <laughs> um, this uh, is part of the show where we I'm talk about YouTube you it, comments. Say it again. Uh, uh, I, I I don't remember what I said. It's well, fine. Let's ooh, move your, on. Your loss. But yeah, probably. I don't know. Um. <laughs> anyways. It's the part of the show where we, where we read YouTube comments and laugh about them because whatever. Uh, kicking things off, Jean Grong Sun says 11 months ago, Buckethead is not a guitarist. He himself is the guitar. How, how do we feel about that? Um, I mean, sure. Why, why not? Sure. Let's, he's, yeah, he's a guitar. He's it's weird that the guitar would play the guitar, though. You feel like that's... That, that's kind of like... That's weird, right? Cannibalistic type of cannibalistic. thing. Cannibalistic. That's yeah. cannibalistic thinking. I mean, this dude's got a Chinese name. Who knows? He does. He does. <laughs> Who knows what happens over there? You know? Yeah. They don't, they don't let us know. Um. Anyways, moving on. Noah Cordero says 10 months ago, Joe Hendrick. <laughs> Did you get lost, buddy? I think he's trying to say he's trying to make a Jimi Hendrix joke or say Jimi Hendrix, but Joe Hendrick. That's like that's the way you accidentally spell Jimi Hendrix in your phone when you're really fucking drunk. <laughs> yeah, and this, it auto corrects everything for you. You're like, fuck it, it's hit send. This guy was really fucking drunk. Joe for this. Hendrick. Yes, Joe Hendrick. We love sure. Joe Hendrick. Joe Hendrick is one of my favorite guitarists. Same. Uh, Mouse Boy X says five years ago, Buckethead makes the voices in my head go away and stay away even after I stop listening. It's always like bewildering to me how many people like say things on YouTube that they really ought to be saying <laughs> to a therapist, to someone with a doctorate. Yes, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Um, it's a vibe. Mm, That's the internet's vibe right there. You know, they do like telehealth and shit. You can do that now. Like, come on. Come mm-hmm. on, Mouse Boy X. Yeah, get with it, man. Yeah, get he's, it he's, he's definitely a furry. Definitely. Definitely a furry. Definitely he's a Mouse a furry. Boy X. Yes, definitely Mouse Boy X, for sure. Um, Oh, oops. Dang it. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong place. Wrong place. Okay, moving on. Bit of a serious note here. There was a there was a there was a relatively serious thread on one of the uh, comment sections, and it started with this comment here. Mm-hmm. Vortex Nectar says six years ago, Buckethead's music does save lives. Feeling overly, sorry, feeling severely suicidal as of late, and his music is the only thing that keeps me afloat. In the not-so-distant past and recovering from having committed suicide, Hmm. his music is invaluably healing, too. Buckethead is clearly resonating with the many tones of the workings and functions of this universe. So, I mean, it is possible to recover from and have committed suicide, but it is very, very rare. Usually if you Mm -hmm. commit suicide, you die and don't come back. True. Because committing suicide means you Mm -hmm. die. Correct. Attempting suicide means you don't. Correct. I Uh, think he means attempting unless he actually died and came back, which would be very impressive. But Mm -hmm. um, It would. Yeah, it would it would have been truly impressive if that was the case. I don't think that's the case, but no, no, I would you know. agree though. The Buckethead is clearly resonating with the many tones of the workings and functions of this universe. Agreed, agreed. Can't disagree um, with that. So we've got a lot of Jordan Vine to talk about. You want to help saw, me with I that? I saw a lot of Jordan Vine. Yeah, sure. Let's kick it. Let's get into it. Kick it old school. Uh, oh yeah, Are we do. <laughs> Sorry, it's been so long. I know, I know. We haven't talked about Jordan Vine in a while, but we've still got the song. Master of the ship key, a bucket bar divine. You're a master of the ship key, a Oh, boy. Oh, wow. It's Jordan Vine says four years ago in a comment subdued. that is all lower case. Very subdued. Four years ago edited says, in my personal opinion, he is the, the best, best guitarist, guitarist there is. is. 
The best guitarist there ever was. The best guitarist there ever will be. No guitarist is better. Buckethead is the best, and that's that. I don't need to think about it. I just know he is, and I believe he is. Buckethead forever. I just love Jordan Vine's attitude as uh, determined for... <laughs> Jordan Vine, like, doesn't play guitar, really know much anything about music. He just knows and believes so much in Buckethead. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. He's, it is. He's truly a beautiful man. He is, like, uh, if, if um, you know what? If Buckethead had a golden retriever, this is exactly what he'd type on the internet. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. Jordan Vine is a dog. Yeah, Jordan Vine, yeah. like, writes YouTube comments for dogs. He does. Which is totally cool. I, we love dogs. Yes, yeah, and we love Jordan of, Vine. Speaking of Jordan Vine comments for dogs, mm -hmm. uh, let's have you read this one for me. Okay, well, here we go. I feel very, very, very proud, honored, and privileged to have discovered and found this guy and his music. And I don't think I'll ever find anything better. I can ensure you that. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, he spelled ensure wrong. No, he spelled it right because he's talking about the uh, the meal replacement. Yeah, drink. that's what I was thinking. For old people. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. He can, yeah, he can he can meal replacement drink you. That's the fact. That's true. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna do two more. Um, <laughs> Jordan Vine says four years ago, I don't care if the pikes start sounding similar, getting repetitive. <laughs> I don't care. I just don't. I love how many people liked this comment. This yeah, was, eight, eight This likes. was one of the more popular comments on the pike. <laughs> like he just, he, he, Jordan Vine does not give a fuck. He just loves Buckethead unconditionally. He just unconditionally loves Buckethead. It's He's, he, he is a dog for Buckethead and it's really astounding. Speaking of unconditionally loving Buckethead, here's mm -hmm. our last Jordan Vine comment for the day. Mm-hmm. And this one, uh, he says, I think I'll continue listening to the king of all guitarists till the day I die. Jordan Vine. Jordan, 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 Jordan Vine. So given that, and the fact that he really hasn't posted any comments in like three or four years makes me wonder, did he listen to Buckethead until the day he died? It's possible. Yeah. Like I've stated before, multiple places, I don't know if he's very young or very old, mm -hmm. but he is likely one of those. So if he's the latter, it's possible he has passed. If I he's the not. latter, if it's the latter, he might have already climbed that ladder up to heaven. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, made a deal with hang God. Out with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Buckethead Sr. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think they would be interested in hanging out with him. He wouldn't <laughs> let them say no. Um, wow. You thinking? You, you think Jordan Vine doesn't believe in consent? There's, no, there's no consent in heaven, Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the name of the episode. <laughs> there's no consent in heaven. That's, yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> name for the episode. Yeah. Uh, Itzik Toledano says six years ago, does he gent? No, he does gent. <laughs> All right. <yep. laughs> uh, moving on. Frankincense says four years ago, my left testicle and beyond. Uh, yeah, that's the tagline for the uh, adult version of Toy Story. Oh, you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of adult... Uh, an adult Toy Story could be pretty fun, you know, like like dildos and butt plugs that talk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I was I was thinking more like it's just like a porn parody where everyone just dresses up like Woody and Bo Peep and shit. Oh and... no no no! What if it's a kid that's dressed up like Andy and he's like sticking Buzz Lightyear up his butt? Do we need to have a talk about children not a depicted kid, not in a pornography? Kid, not, not a kid. Not a kid. No, not, not a like kid. A, a cartoon of a kid, no, man. An adult. That's what I'm saying. Lowly isn't pedophilia. Get low. Listen, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Lil John said it best in his song, Get Lowly. <laughs> <laughs> From the window to, to the, the jail. To the police break down my wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, anyways. Mehdi Cheheb says one year ago, this sounds like when I argue with myself. Mehdi Cheheb 
leaves a lot of comments, and I can't remember liking any of them. No, they're all mostly nonsense. Yeah, they're mostly him like trying to sound cool, and I'm like, you're mm-hmm. no Jordan Vine, Medi Cheheb. Yeah, he's no Jordan Vine. He's trying to be in in his own way, but he he's all right. He's all right. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think that Pike sounded like what it would sound like if Medi Cheheb argued with himself, but that's just me. Indeed. Um, Crystal Head le- says six years ago. Buckethead for president, 2016. We're going to talk about some of the responses here. That would have saved us some, one, some headaches. Maybe, maybe. One response in particular. Old school taking you back, says six years ago. I second that. Holy crap. A president that just comes out and says nothing and just shreds and looks like Mike Myers with somewhat of a chicken fetish? No one would mess with us, period. I mean, it could literally not be any worse than we have done. (laughs) It literally, there is nothing we could do to make a worse decision than we have on the American voting record. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's start voting famous musicians into office. Fucking like Mickey Mouse gets like 50,000 votes a year. That's what I'm saying. Are you fucking serious? Enough people vote for Mickey Mouse. Wow. You know, yeah. fucking put him in office. <laughs> there we go. Let's do I don't. I don't care. Fucking Mickey Rooney, if he's still. I, mean, I think he's dead. But who cares? Is fucking, Mickey Rooney dead? He's gotta be. He was like he's, ninety years old. He was twenty so years ago. Old when I was a kid. Right? Yeah, like just a, just an ancient man. Yeah. Um. Okay. Next is a a return of a favorite, an old favorite. Old favorite. And I uh, I encountered it again, and I'm going to I'm going to talk about this every time I see it. Okay. Every single time, just so you know. Mm-hmm. YouTube user RC <laughs> Swiss Made says you. one year ago, Buckethead is not from this world. Where, Where we, we go, go one, one, we go, go all. <laughs> yeah, we love the Q-Pill Buckethead. It's... The Q-Pill Bucket stands. We, uh, there's nothing funnier than that. Um, nothing better. So to wrap things up, mm-hmm. um, we're going to do it with a statement from the Britain Void. Okay. It's been a long time. It's been a moment. From the Britain Void. Yesterday at 1.57 p.m., you texted me. <laughs> Satan's probably got a sick DVD collection, <laughs> a copy of Kirk Cameron's Saving Christmas, and an endless cabinet filled with the com- filled completely with the Love Guru on HD DVD. <laughs> Statements from the bucket boy. Bucket boy. You just know Satan loves HD DVD. Oh yeah, he does. Like he, he definitely. Like, but he only has a DVD player. <laughs> That's his thing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. You know, you know what's interesting. Speaking of HD DVD, mm-hmm. um, I learned recently that the film Triple X came out on HD DVD, but only in Japan. It was never released on HD DVD anywhere else. Huh. And Brit, I yeah. spent literal hours looking for a copy of Triple X on HD DVD. From Japan, and I could not find one, and I'm disappointed. I want that dumb shit, that dumb memorabilia in my life. Because it's so, because like HD DVD is funny. It's funny as a failed format. And Triple X is the funniest film I could think of to be on HD DVD. It's uh, Stealth, Stealth would be pretty funny. Oh, yeah, yeah. or Torque. To- oh, very Torque, true. Torque would be a really good Th- HD that was, DVD. That was the motorcycle one with Lawrence Fishburne or something? Uh, I think Adam Scott is in it. Yeah, it's like a fucking Star mm-hmm. Wars, but on uh, rice rockets. Yes, correct. And it's got really like awkward, bad CGI from 2006. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty bad. But um, he has like, at the end, like the kid like gets this force ability to motorcycle ride. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I, I saw thought, it in the I theater and thought, I was like, what? I almost thought you were going to say foreskin. Got yeah, he, yeah he, got, he got his foreskin got, <laughs> caught in the motorcycle chain, ripped Yikes. his whole dick off. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like jerking off into the engine, you know. <laughs> yeah. Tor- yeah to- it was called it. Torque Skin is the name <laughs> oh, of the movie. Nice. nice. Uh, That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, my God. Britt, what do you got to recommend us? Uh, shoot. I totally forgot to write a record. No, no. I, I 
I had something. I, I watched a film, mm-hmm. but I didn't write it down. Shit. Okay, you uh, want to think about it? Well, yeah, yeah, you go first, and I'll okay. look up what I wrote down. Uh, my recommendation, as has been, you know, a, at times in the past, is a video game. Uh-huh. Um, and the video game that I recommend is Cyberpunk 2077. Really? Uh, so is that, it good now, finally? Uh, so if you're not familiar with the 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 sordid history of Cyberpunk 2077, to put it simply, um, it was a very hyped game that released in a very broken state. As a result, a lot of people were very mad, and a lot of drama ensued. Uh, but that was in 2020. That mm-hmm. game came out in 2020. It is now 2022. And guess what? They fixed it. It's good now. Interesting. Um, so, like, uh, they recently updated it to support the current gen system, so the PS5 and Xbox Series X. Mm-hmm. And I am currently playing it on PS5. I'm about mm, maybe 20 hours into it, and not only has it been like, has it run great? Uh, no, I've I've encountered some bugs, but nothing like game breaking, nothing major. Okay. Um, but not only has it been has it run really good and looked really good, it has been. I shit you not, like, one of the most enjoyable and engrossing gaming experiences I've had in quite some time. Like, I think it is a fantastic game. I really, really like it. It reminds me a lot of uh, Fallout New Vegas Mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of, like, the writing is really, really good and the story is really compelling. The voice acting is fucking fantastic. Really? And, like... The, I really, it's not often that the voice acting is like noticeably good on things. So the, the vo- except for like rock star stuff, it's always top notch. So the voice acting is really, really good, not mm-hmm. only for the main character who's just like your, you know, nameless protagonist basically, mm-hmm. uh, but also for the main supporting character in the game, which is Keanu Reeves. So Keanu Reeves has an insane amount of dialogue in that game. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I remember it, is, it was it was like super hyped that he was going to be in there. So he's not just in the game; like mm-hmm. he is literally in like almost every cutscene, almost every interaction you have with someone. He is a part of, and that's I won't dope. spoil why that's the case. But uh, suffice it to say, there are uh, reasons in universe for his character to be around you at all times, and his he says a lot, and his performance honestly is the best acting performance I've heard from him in a very long time. Like, he, he's, his, his readings of the lines are really, really good, and like, mm-hmm. his character's cool, and it's like the story's... He's just cool. He's like, just cool, he's but, cool well, so he's cool, but also the character they wrote for him is really cool, and so, like, it just, it works really well, and like, the story I think is really, really good, and I really have enjoyed it, and the world is really cool, it's, 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 it looks amazing, and it's just really fucking rad like if you have a modern console you should play that game it's it's really rad don't play it on the old consoles but yeah. on the new ones it's fucking good is it supposed to be good for pc yet oh it's been good on pc for a while okay so, fair, yes cool. uh, so on pc it is also good yeah. um or so i have heard i have not played it on pc but um i can't not cannot recommend it enough it's fucking rad uh, mm-hmm. super recommend it uh brit what you got uh, I'm going to recommend a very strange film i watched uh 1999's the naked man Okay. It was only ever released on VHS. Uh, so in ninety nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah right? ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. But I know still ninety nine. Only released on VHS is still kind of weird, especially since the movie starred Michael Rappaport. Okay. And it's like so it's got like a pretty like decent cast, and uh, it, it's co written by Ethan Cohen of the Cohen Brothers. Okay. Not the one who wrote Garfield, who fucking. <laughs> Bill Murray thought was a Coen brother, but wasn't. It's like, not a fake Coen brother. actual one. And so it does have like that dark tone, except like it's just the weirdest tone of any film I've ever known. And so, I mean, it's going to be impossible for you to find it. So if you are interested in it, uh, join our Discord. Uh, I put it up there. Mm-hmm. I've got a, a private page on our Discord just for dumb movies that I like that are impossible to find that I think people should watch. That uh, rules. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend both The Naked Man from 1999, starring Michael Rappaport, but also our Discord because there's no other fucking way you're gonna find it. Yeah, you're not. That's you're true. Not, you're not good at finding movies like I am. You're not gonna find it. Yeah, it's it's great the the archival work you're doing, Britt. We, Thank re, you. we really appreciate I've, it. I have been doing it for like quite a long time now, and it's like it's crazy to me. I've got uh, at this point twelve thousand six hundred and sixty nine films. Mm-hmm. That is more, I think, than any of the current streaming services offer on their platform at any given it is, time. It is more movies than Amazon has available for rental or buying. Wow. Yeah. So, like, streaming or buying. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's it's just, like, I have more movies than 
every streaming service but Amazon put together. That rocks. That does rock. That's awesome, I've dude. I've got some weird shit, and I love it. That's super awesome. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, I like that we said hell yeah at the same time. Yeah, we say hell yeah a lot. That's kind of our, our positive thing. That's our favorite band. It is, besides Damage Plan. Yeah, that's true. Damage hell yeah. Is it time for my favorite part of the show? I guess it has to be. Let's do it. Here we go. Bucket joke. Got some jokes this week. Uh, so You're in a comedy club this week. Yeah, well, yeah, because of doing comedy. Because you know they say laughter is the best medicine, but I I ask for amoxicillin. <laughs> Uh, when I lose at Hangman, I at least like to pretend that he was into erotic asphyxiation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you Ma- gotta. It makes me feel better yeah. about being yeah. bad with words. <laughs> um, when you think about it, um, an aquarium is just sushi soup. <laughs> yeah, it is. <clears throat> sure. So uh, I, uh, I watched The NeverEnding Story the other day. Uh-huh. Uh, not, not really what I expected. It ended. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot we were doing this part of the show. Fuck you, Spencer. <laughs> um, we're doing this again. I watched the never-ending story the other day. Uh, uh-huh. Not quite what I expected, though. Uh-huh. Uh, for one thing, it ends. <laughs> um, a man walks into a bar and orders negative one root beer. The bartender says, sorry, that's irrational. <laughs> Wow. wow. Uh, I've been watching too much porn. I went to my proctologist the other day, and after he did my cancer screening, I gaped for him. <laughs> nice. Uh, when I was in school, my computer teacher always told me to back up my work. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that advice wasn't so handy as an Uber driver. Most folks wanted to go forward. Um... <laughs> I, I love how you, much you hated that one. Um, uh, if deviled eggs are so good, I'd love to see how God prepares them. Oh, yeah. Jesus eggs. Uh, Jesus, yeah, Jesus eggs. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll close out on this one. Um, Stephen Hawking famously hated organized religion. Yeah. Uh, do you know what else Stephen Hawking couldn't stand? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I read that wrong. <laughs> do you know what else Stephen Hawking couldn't stand? Ha, 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 joke. Oh, wow. Cool, we did it. Yeah, we did it. We're we're at the end of the show, Britt. We uh, made it. We're here. We did. Where uh, can we find you on the internet? You can find me at Dog Vorbis, but you know what? Just go to at a bucket cast on most socials. Yeah. Click including the, including Patreon. Yeah. Cl- click the link to join the Patreon. Click the link to join the Discord. Mm-hmm. Call us on the phone. Four two five three one zero two four one six. Um, hit us up on the the Trilly, the Trilio, the Dilio, and the Scrilio if you want. For sure. And then Spencer dot zone. If you want to hang out with me, that's Spencer S P E N S E R, like dot, Spencer's gifts. Dot Z O N E. I'm sorry, not like Spencer's gifts. Yeah, not. Like, I always what forget because. Because I like give you the benefit of the doubt, but you are the very uncool version of Spencer. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's true. You don't have gifts. Uh, you have, I have like, gifts sometimes. You have GIF gifts. Like I, you have you have I, animated I, uh, pictures. Yeah. On the internet. Sure. Uh-huh. Sure. Um. But yeah, that's it. That's the show. Yeah. Hey, uh, this has been Spencer. And this has been Britain. You've been listening to Getting Head, a, a bucket, bucket cast. cast. Stay greasy, bucket heads. A namaste. God, are you ready for our final segment? I am certainly ready for our final segment. Oh my God! You can't try to get laid or watch people.
first uh before we get into it uh we're gonna do this every time even if we have a guest or not uh for those unaware for the not regular listener perhaps if you're with us for your first time if you are a ralph virgin if you will this is our segment called epic ralph uh, battles in history Mm -hmm. where we reenact a scene from 2009's ming hags directed by Bam Margera, Bamuel Margera. Uh, in which uh, this the scene uh, is between uh, um, Bam Margera's grandfather is one of the actors, and the other is a guy named Mark the Bagger. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to play the scene without any real context, because mm-hmm. no matter what context we give you, it will never suffice. Mm-hmm. So here we go. Jesus Christ, Ralph! Are you supposed to go out looking for a job today? Nah, there's a b-ball game coming on at four. You can't watch no b-ball game. You gotta get a job. Nah, I'm gonna try to get laid tonight. Ralph, I'm getting tired of it. You're gonna get a job today. T-O-D-A-Y. This is muffed up. I'm taking a day off. Back in the war, we kill sissies like you. I like to shoot you, stupid. You couldn't hit the side of a barn. If we were in the jungle, I'd slice your throat. And this isn't the jungle. My cat will save me. I can't believe that I had sex to even make you. Sex makes people? What a waste of pleasure. My name is Ralph. Your forehead makes a good target. By the end of the day, you better have a job or else. You see this? It's gonna hurt. Get a job. Um, All right. And so wow, based on... We, have we got some humdingers based, for you today? Based on that amazing scene, what we do is we mm-hmm. just reassign these characters to different characters throughout historical events mm-hmm. in history. This yeah. is all, I think so far, and I think we should probably never really do fictional characters. No, no. I think it's more fun if we like actually draw from real life. Yeah, real events. Yeah, it, real it, real it, conflicts, real mm-hmm. man versus man conflicts here. Mm-hmm. And so uh, yeah. do you want to go first or uh, should, should we do mine? Uh, let's, let's do, let's do yours first. Okay. Um, so this, this is a scene between, <laughs> I, between Euronymous and, uh, at the time Count Grishnok, also known as Varg, Varg Vikernes, uh, Vikernes from, yeah. um, from Burzum and both of them were in mayhem at the time. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, Varg ended up famously killing Euronymous by and, stabbing him in the head. And this is, this is on the night that happened. Would wow. you uh, oh, would you wow. like to be Varg or Euronymous? I cannot believe that you didn't give the Mark the Bagger character to Varg. That that is absolutely mind boggling to me. <laughs> it, but the <laughs> pro- the problem is like he, Varg is the one who's threatening violence. So that's true. Varg that, has to that be makes sense. the that person sense, who's yeah. threatening violence in the scene. Um, I, I get it. I, I would have loved to have said, my name is Varg. I know. But it, you just, See, it I just, want that. I want it, it, the, the line works so well, but in context, it doesn't. So mm-hmm. so uh, would you rather be Varg or, or rather uh-huh. Count Grishnok? Or your, and that's the thing. He wasn't Varg at this point. Yes. He was Count Grishnok. That's, so that, that's true. That also would um, make sense. So. I, I, I'll, um, honestly, I'll be Euronymous. Okay. That's yeah. fair. Uh, in that case, <clears throat> I will lead. Let me, uh, let me change the scene here to, to reflect oh, that. Good point, good point. All right, are we there ready? We, go. Uh, we are ready. De mysterious dom satanus, your animus. Aren't you supposed to give me royalty payments from Burzum today? No, nah, there's a church burning on at four. You can't do no church burning. You got to give me that royalty payment. No, nah, I'm going to try to capitalize on our vocalist suicide tonight. Your animus, I am getting tired of it. You're going to give me that money? And make me infamous in the black metal scene today. T O D A Y. This is muffed up. I'm taking the day off. In my eco fascist utopia, we'd kill sissies like you. I'd like to stab you, stupid. You couldn't stab a church. <laughs> if we weren't alone in your house, I'd stab you right now. <laughs> We are alone in my house right now. I can't believe I even recorded a seminal black metal album with you. We made a black metal album. What a waste of Nazi ideology. (laughs) My name is Euronymous. Your head makes a good target. Get me my money right now or else. You see this knife? It's going to hurt. Oh, fuck it. I might as well murder you anyway. 
amazing. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. Um, <laughs> so uh, our next scene. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna set this up okay. for us. So our next scene is between um, is a conversation between Paula Abdul on the set of her 2007 reality series Hey Paula, and emails on her BlackBerry from a producer firing her from the Bratz movie. So I will say. I am oddly prepared to play the role of Paula Abdul. Yes, you are definitely going to play Paula Abdul. Uh, and I, 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 I want to explain this real quick. Uh, the other night, I spent several hours going down a rabbit hole of the, like, uh, I, th- I think it was a PlayStation 2 game from, like, 2005, the American Idol game, uh-huh. that has a lot of Paula Abdul in it doing uh-huh. voice acting. So yeah. I am... You're ready? I'm kind of in Apollo mode at this, at this point, so All right. I'm totally ready for this. Go let's, for it. Let's do it. Jesus Christ, Paula Abdul. This email is to inform you that you're being fired from the Bratz movie. I'll be done shooting my reality series, Hey Paula, at four. You can definitely keep shooting Hey Paula past four. You're out of a job. Nah, I'm gonna going to choreograph dances and design fashion for the Bratz movie. Paula, I'm getting tired of sending emails to your BlackBerry. You're going to stop consulting on Bratz today. T-O-D-A-Y. This is muffed up. I'm literally responding from my BlackBerry while on set. Back at the studio, we decided we don't like you. We don't want to shoot with you, stupid. You couldn't fire John Voight like this. If we were at the studio, I'd have security drag you out. Well, this isn't the studio. My handlers on Hey Paula will save me. I can't believe you're still responding while filming. We're still filming? What a waste of reality show drama. My name is Paula. You don't make a good hire. By the end of the day, you better stop telling people you work on the Brat movie. See this? We're going to make it without you. Good luck on Hey Paula. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful tie into our special bonus episode, yeah. which if you're listening to this, will be out right now. Go check that mm-hmm. out on Patreon. Yeah, it's pretty oh, good. Yeah. It's pretty good. Well, anyways, uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, get fucked. Yeah, stay fucking shitty. Fuck you. Um, bye-bye, shitty committee.